What's up guys and welcome back to the Rise of Empires guide. I'm Kalistos of State 119 and today we're going to be having our advanced farm guide. I will be hiding behind the screen for this one as I have a pretty nasty cold and trust me there's nothing pleasant to see. Now when it comes to starting a farm account from scratch I already made a 3 video series where I explained all that but what about the end game and what stage do you want to bring your farm up to? This is what we're going to be talking about today and answering all the questions on how your farm should be looking like, what needs developing, how much and why and for all this we're gonna be using one of my own farms as an example. The video is done in portrait mode as you probably noticed as there were quite a few requests for it and I wanted to test it out and see what you guys think. So please leave in the comments below your opinions should I do more portrait mode videos or not. Also want to give a shout out to G Baby from State 364 as a little bird he told me that you have been promoting my videos in your alliance since the beginning and wanted to say that I really appreciate it, thanks a lot. Also please remember this type of guides and tutorials require a lot of work and a lot of time and this video would not be possible without the help of our sponsor for today. The Huawei App Gallery is an Android device app but don't worry anybody can use it. All you need is Bluestacks for which I left a link in the description below that you can use to install the Huawei App Gallery with. Now because there were a lot of confusions in the past, I want to clarify one thing, the Huawei App Gallery has different teams with different offers from each country and I'm representing currently the one from Switzerland which means if you want to take advantage of these offers you need to install the App Gallery and from the menu select the country as Switzerland to be able to use it. That also means that the currency is going to be the Swiss franc which is equal to $1.08 just to have a clear idea of the conversion. Firstly, you will have 4 coupons available to claim and use for your future purchases in Rise of Empires. Please remember to claim the coupons because they do have a 15 days period before they expire. Besides the coupons, you have a 15% cashback for installing Rise of Empires. To make the total maps much easier, the coupons together with the 15% cashback can give you up to a 70% discount compared to US prices. Here's a table of how it works to have a clear view. The payment methods available are PayPal, debit and credit card issued in the US, EU, Australia, UK and Canada. This entire offer is available from the 21st of May till the 31st of May, so take advantage of it while you still can. In the description of the video you will find all the links you need for it and if you still have other questions about it don't hesitate to join their discord channel where the guys from Huawei can help you with anything you need to know. And now let's get back to our farm guide. Okay so our farms have two purposes. On one side you have farms for the sake of development which means we're gonna be needing the resources from it and then you have the reign of chaos farms where we're going to be needing them for wars and tile battles. So let's discuss about the obvious which is for the resources. What level should I bring my farm up to Kalistos? That is the question I hear a lot. And speaking just about resources there is no level limit. The higher the level of the farm means you can also upgrade the higher levels the resource buildings. So practically speaking the answer is the higher the better. I would say from the very beginning of when you start your main account you should already start your farms. And when I say start, I mean just create the accounts, bind them to IM30 and that's it. You're going to be more than occupied developing your main castle, but the idea here is every time you're gonna have that little moment where you're going to have to wait 10 minutes for your building to finish, it's going to make it much easier for you to just simply very fast logging onto your farm account, click build, click research and then go back to your main. And you don't waste any more extra time building and developing farms but you're using those moments where you would be just sitting looking at the screen waiting for the main building to finish anyway. I strongly believe that this game should have a balance between being efficient and spending too much time in it. Having farms is a necessity in this game so it's not a question about should I have them or not but if you're going to build them then you might as well do it in the most efficient way possible. 
Developing any type of castle including farms is gonna require resources and most of the time you're gonna be waiting for them so having the accounts already built means all the time that you're not spending on the farm that castle is going to be producing resources so when you do want to log in you have the resources ready for it. At castle level 19 on your main account you're gonna get into a standstill where you're going to be spending a lot of time and at that point I would advise you to bring your farms up to level 14. Hand in hand with the level also comes the number of farms you're gonna be having. Because using resources to level them up means you're not using it to level up your main. So that's the point where you want to start building new farms. For starters I would say 4 farms are more than enough but when you want to go higher than level 19 on your main that's when you should already consider building extra farms. That will give you more resources to work with and besides developing your main it will give you a chance to develop the first farms that you had without slowing you down. Your end game goal should be to have between 6 to 8 farms. Now when it comes to the reign of chaos needs, the process is way simpler because the level you want to reach with your farms is level 19 and the main reason for it is the dragon slayer. When you are using your farms for the rock event you will be under a shield so you don't have to worry about direct attacks which means they will use dragons to get rid of your farms. Now the first thing you can do against that is upgrading your fortress buildings which will increase the durability of the walls and so force the enemy to waste even more dragons trying to zero it out. But if your farm is level 19 and has the dragon slay already it will make it much more difficult for the enemy to deal with you. That's why overall your main goal with your farm should be to reach level 19 and get that dragon slayer ready as soon as possible. And this pretty much covers the subject of level and the amount of farms you need. Now let's discuss about what you want to do inside the farm. One of the biggest questions for farms is how to deal with the charcoal consumption. I have here a level 22 farm therefore it means that the level of the buildings are much higher and consume even more charcoal and yet as you can see I have a lot of extra charcoal even though I'm not producing any of it. The only production for it comes from the charcoal workshop which I would advise you to level up to the maximum of your farm. But where does the rest come from? The answer is simple it's the trading house. Leveling up the trading house means you're going to be getting more things to buy and bigger bundles. For me level 17 is ideal for what I need but you can check for yourself and decide what suits you better. Visiting my farm daily and just one time purchasing things from trading house pretty much covers all the requirements I have for charcoal. Now even so having a low consumption helps makes things easier and we do that by disconnecting the buildings that we're not using and keeping the level of the things that we don't always need to the minimum. Let's start with the resource buildings. Now I personally 99% of the time just need wood and iron. Yes I'm a cavalry maid. So as you can see the iron and wood are all maxed out where the marble and the food especially are at a much lower level as I don't need those resources anymore and I don't need them to consume even more charcoal for no reason. Besides the resource buildings we have the mints. Now for anybody that has been watching tutorials from before please be noticed that since quite a while the game has been updated where the mints have to be connected to the road to be producing gold. So if your mints are disconnected make sure to go and connect them as your farm isn't producing any gold. As you probably noticed my mints are not maxed out because first of all I don't really need more gold and second of all remember that the mints production requires population. And starving your tavern which means you don't put food or ale in it or better yet disconnected from the road forever. We only have access to what is called the passive population. Which is influenced by the level and amount of your houses. And even if your houses are maxed out there's only that much population you can get out of it. 
So you only need the mints to be at a level where that can be sustained by your passive population. The buildings that I don't need at all will be disconnected from the road and put somewhere to the side to not disturb me and the buildings that I do use from time to time will be connected in a way where I have easy access. For example, the troop buildings are connected with one single road which I can connect to the main by moving only one piece. So it's very easy access to get to and still very easy to disconnect afterwards. Okay, so with the charcoal covered, we can move to the other buildings, training grounds. Now what I have here is a very well developed farm, but when it comes to the cavalry, generally you want to be using tier 1 troops all the time. First of all, for gathering purposes, they are the only choice and even in the reign of chaos defense, tier 1 cavalry troops are simply the faster and better choice. Yes, they are not strong and yes, you will lose a few in the process, but a very low training cost and time makes the result worth it. There's a very simple rule in Reign of Chaos. It doesn't matter how strong you are, if the other guy gets to the tile faster than you, he still gets the tile. But that depends obviously also on the heroes that you are using in the legions. Generally, I would say you don't really need the high level tier troops, definitely not for gathering and neither for Reign of Chaos. Other buildings that you can be focusing on are the training grounds as they do increase the amount of troops in your legions and therefore make it stronger when you need the power and increase the load to gather more resources. And last building to talk about is the fortress. Increasing the level of it will not just benefit you against enemies during rock, but it will allow you to hit your farm many more times when you want to take the resources from it without zeroing it, as each level increases the durability of the castle. And now we can go into the technology of the farm. The first two you should be maxing out, everything from extra resource production, reduced building time, increased gathering is in there and it's a definite must have. In my first farm guide you hear me say how I prefer passive farms over active ones, but that doesn't mean active gathering ones are bad, so in this one I can give you an example of what you do in an active one. Second in priority comes the legion stack as without them you cannot gather. It's pretty easy for all four legions to reach the second hero unlocking. You can go for three heroes, but I personally never bother. The medical tech is only maxed out because I needed it for the zone commemoration. Now all my farms have maxed out zone commemoration and the reason why because it simply means more resources from the cup rewards and more cup points for the state. If you are in a much older state with time, your main players will become maxed out or getting almost there and will have trouble supporting the state for cop points. And that's when your farms become very important. If you ask yourself why some of my buildings are so well developed for a farm, this is why I'm doing cop every week when we need more points to win and having zone commemoration maxed out for it obviously helps a lot. For the legions I generally have in each two purple heroes with the first and the sixth skill maxed out for extra troops and the other skills as well developed as possible to help out with taking tiles in rock. But I think the most important part in a farm is the scavenger equipment. Now the key components for gathering are the boots, trinket and necklace and one more piece for the set bonus. That is if you're only interested in gathering iron, which I am, but if you want you can always go for the full set. Production heroes. Now obviously having the purple heroes like the alchemist, taskmaster is ideal, but that doesn't mean that the blue and green heroes are useless. Remember that each of these heroes give you extra production which may not seem as much to begin with, but over time that little extra becomes a lot. And more importantly, it's free. Definitely take advantage of every production hero you can use. The trading balloon will help with getting the items needed to upgrade the town hall. Developing your dragon. It may sound like a very time consuming task, but it's worth it. 
gathering and production buffs that come from the dragon are really good and if you can be bothered to spend the time to explore go and check out my did you know videos where I have a few tips on that also. And I think last thing to mention is the class level. Doing national quests on your farms the same like the dragon's exploration may seem like a tedious job but it's definitely worth it. The extras you get from the cards make a big difference, higher the level the better obviously and plus it will help your entire state by filling in the requirements for unlocking the next national quest chapters. And to close up the advanced farm guide I want to do a quick run of what I do every day when I visit my farms for you guys to also have a clear idea. First I collect the daily rewards. I use up all the free super scrolls, convert medals to have some wisdom medals ready for heroes day, of course visit the trading house and buy all the pretty much free resources and of course the charcoal and speaking of charcoal I always check if I do need more charcoal if I have to use the bundles in this case I don't. Sending the workers to explore in case you don't have anything to do with them always explore with your workers as that is a lot of extra resources for me. If you're still working on developing the dragon of course do the explorations and send your troops to the national quest if you're still working on the level. Now I have a high enough level for both of them and that's why I don't do it anymore. And last but not least sending your troops to gather most of the time iron. Now let me just throw it out there, if you know that your troops are only gonna be gathering some 400 to iron for example, don't send them to level 9 tiles because you're just wasting the tiles for everybody else. Check one time how much your legions are able to gather and just send them to the levels that actually have that amount. And with that I think we covered everything in this advanced farm guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful, if so please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel to get notified for all the new videos. But that's it for me guys, thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next videos. Next video.